Today, for our math strategies video, we're going to be talking about line plots. So line plots are data displays that show the frequencies of the data as marks above a number line. And those frequencies tell us the number of and that those marks are usually X's above the number line. So let's say, for example, we measured insects in inches and we wrote down all of our data here in a list. Okay. So instead of just looking at this list, we could use a line plot to organize our data, okay? So the line plot below shows the sizes of different insects, okay? So when we look here above the one, there are three X's, okay? And that means that there were three insects that we measured that were, that were one inch in length. And if I look over at my um, list here, I see I have three ones, okay? Now, if I look at the one and one half mark on my number line, I see three X's again. And that means there were three insects that measured one and one half in length, okay? So if I look over at my two on my number line, I don't have any X's there. And that means that none of our insects measured two inches, okay? So if I look all the way down toward the end of my number line at three and one half, I see the most common measurement that we found, which was three and one half, because there are four X's above three and one half, which means there are four insects that measured, um, that measured three and one half, okay? So sometimes if we're given a data, it helps to organize it as we're recording that line plot. So let's take a look at this set of data and let's take a look at this number line and see if we can put some X's there to organize it a little bit. So as I look at this data set here, I see that there is a five and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take that five and I'm gonna put an X above the five on my number line. And that means I only have one five in my data set, okay? So I see I have um, a one, five and a half, so I'm gonna put one X above that five and a half. I have two sixes, so I'm gonna put two X's above my sixes. And then I have two six and a halves, so I'm gonna put two X's above that on my number line. I have two sevens, and I also have two seven and a half, so I'm gonna put two X's above seven and a half. And the only number that is not showing up in my data is eight, and that's because I don't have any, so I don't have any X's above that eight in that data set, okay? So now let's take a look at another line plot and see if we can answer some questions based on this line plot. But before I dive in and start answering questions, I'm just going to kind of analyze and interpret this data first. The line plot below shows the distance students lived from the school in miles. Okay, so if I see one X above the five, that means one student lives five miles from school. If I see two X's above five and a half, that means that there were two students that lived five and a half miles from school, okay? And so forth. I can look here at seven and a half and realize no students lived seven and a half miles from school, okay? So after kind of looking at this data, now I can begin to answer some questions on it. So the first question is how many more students lived five and a half miles from school than five miles from school, okay? So I know five and a half, there were two students, and five miles, there was one student. So two minus one is gonna give me one. So there was one more student that lived five and a half than five. The next question is how many students live six or more miles from school? So I'm gonna start at my six, and I'm gonna count my X's, okay? So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's a total of eight students that live six or more miles from school. So our last question is, what is the most common distance from school? This actually has two answers, okay? Because I have two X's above five and a half and I have two X's above seven and three fourths. So those, those two distances are the most common distance from schools. So as you begin to interpret and create line, line plots, remember your knowledge of number lines fraction equivalents, as well as addition and subtraction of fractions to help you.